Hello! This Friday Functions video is going to talk about the data source info function. And it is in response to a question that was asked from one of our SharePoint customers who are using Power Apps with SharePoint. The question was, in certain cases when an app is made, the app maker, the person making the app, might forget to share the access or give access permissions to all of its users when they share an app. Because of that, uh, many people are getting a red access denied message that's um, long-winded and difficult for our customers to understand. So how can we trap that they don't have access in advance and give them a better message so that they'll know what to do to get access? And I thought that was an excellent question. So I want to start by saying um, it is definitely possible. There are two methods of doing this. One is going to be shown in this video, the data source info. The other is using our experimental feature as far as formula error trapping. So this video, again, I'm going to scope it down to data source info, which is primarily the easiest way to do this. All right. So I'm going to start by to giving you a little disclaimer, when it comes to using customized forms on SharePoint Online, you don't have to worry so much about this. And the reason is because the forms will automatically inherit the permissions of the list. So there's not really a need to share the form. The only exception is, is if you embed the form on a page, then you point someone to that page, they're going to get an access denied message. So just keep that in mind. However, with create an app, right, you always have to take a minute, put it on your checklist of things to do. After you create the app, when you're ready to share, make sure you share with everybody that you want to share the app with because app sharing does not automatically share the data source. And that's true with any data source. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create a sample app here. So access check app, and I'm just going to create an app from data. So um, Power Apps is going to go ahead and build those three screens for me. I could use what I'm about to explain to you in customized forms as well. It's just that since this problem is most likely going to occur with apps rather than customized forms, I decided to do the demo in an app. So FYI, while this is loading, let's suppose I generate this app, I work on it, I brand it, I do everything I want to do to it, and now I save, I publish, and then I share. I might decide to share this app with Brian Dang of my team, but Brian does not have access to that list in the planning team SharePoint site. So when he opens this app, he's going to feel an impact in basically two ways. Way number one is the first page gallery. So the gallery is showing you every item in the list, right? For the most part, right? You have to page, of course. Um, but if he doesn't have access to that list, the gallery will be completely blank when he opens the screen. And this is because we, we respect SharePoint security trimming. So just like in search results, you don't see in search results anything that you don't have access to. In the same way here, if I open this screen and I don't have access to this contractor's list, I won't see anything in this gallery. It will be blank. Okay. Now, that doesn't mean that Brian will actually consider that a negative. Brian might be going into this app for the purpose of adding a new contractor. Maybe he's the resident engineer and he wants to add a new contractor. So he might not care that that gallery is empty and he might just click here to get to the new form and start filling it out. Now, the problem with that is it'll allow him to figure, fill his form out as much as he wants, right? But when he clicks, clicks the submit button, it will return the server side error message that basically indicates he does not have access to the data. 
So he wasted a bit of time there filling out that form and he may not know exactly um, what to do if he doesn't have access, right? So there's a couple of things going on there. So how do we work around that? So let's let's think about the first the function I'd like to cover in this video, which is the data source info function. It will help us determine if he has access first, which means we can both show him a message to let him know as soon as he hits this page, don't type anything, you don't have access. And we can also hide that submit button from him because he doesn't have access. So let me show you how you do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is from the screen of the form, you can put this in the on start as well. So you can put it in the on visible on the, or the on start, depending on your business scenario. But I'm going to put it in the on visible. And basically, I'm going to take a parameter and I'm going to make up a name for this uh, variable, right? I'm going to call this variable has perms, which is Audrey's invented name for the variable. And I'm going to make it a global variable. So I'm going to use the set function and I'm going to type the name of the variable I want to use, right? Just has perms. I'm going to hit comma. And now I'm going to use the data source info function. You see it right here, data source info, which has two parameters. So if I get right after the first parameter and you look up here, you can see that I need the source and then how I want to enumerate that. So what I'm going to do is first type the source. So in this particular app, you saw me generate this app. Uh, I use the contractors list. And so that's the only data source that has been put in here. If I had other data sources, I might want to do this for each data source. It depends, right? But in this case, this is just a contractor form. So I'm just going to use the contractor's data source. And then I'm going to go down here and you can notice that I can investigate this, um, the user's access to this data. Do they have create permissions? Do they have delete permissions? And there's more. So I'm going to check their create permissions to make sure that they can submit data. Now, I just want to bring you over to our share to our uh, documentation. You just do a search on Power Apps documentation for data source info function, and you'll find out that this actually does quite a bit, not just what I'm showing you today. There's quite a few things you can do with this function, but today I'm kind of focusing on the ability to create, delete, edit. OK, um, I'll say, OK, so we are going to go back to our app now that we have that variable in there. Now we can see whether or not they have create permissions from that variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to insert a label real quick. And I'm going to take that label and I'm going to change the text property of that label. Um, so I'm just going to put it over here on the right because I don't have a lot of space on this form. So I'll, let's make some space for it. So I'll click on the form and I'll move it down. And then I'll take my little label here. And this will tell me whether or not they have access. Right? Because I'm going to set the text property of that. to our variable. So just give me one minute. Gonna go down to the text property and I'm gonna change this, not don't put anything in quotes because I'm using a variable to the has perms variable. Okay. Now right now it says false because I'm in an on visible property so I kind of need to get away from this property long enough for it to evaluate. So I'm going to go back to screen one. Okay, I'm going to go back to screen one. And I'm going to run the app. And then I'm going to hit the plus sign. Okay. And you see that it is true. So I do have create permissions. Now you all knew that because if I didn't, I wouldn't have been able to make this app. But it's going to continuously evaluate the person who hits this form. No matter how many people hit this form, this is going to evaluate to true or false. Now, I don't want to use that on the screen that way because nobody will know what that means either. But I do want to use it for a couple of things. One, I'm going to set the visible property of this 
to um, match that, right? So I'm going to go down to the visible property of my checkbox. And I'm going to set that not to true, but to has terms, which means that it will be visible if I do have um, permission to this list and it will be hidden if I don't. Okay, very easy. Now what I could also add is an icon that basically launches where I can go to get permissions, right? So I can go in here and I can insert another icon and I might stack them on top of each other or I could use one image and do an if statement, you know, use two images and do an if statement and swap the control image out. In this case, just to save time, I'm just going to um, add an image. Let's see, what do we want to add? I don't like any of them for this particular purpose, but just to save time, I'm going to add the one that looks like tools right here, right? Okay, so we'll add that. We'll make it white. So I'll make it white and put it right here. And then I will lay it on top of the checkbox and also set its visible permission to the same thing. Um, well, actually to the opposite of the same thing. So, so I will go in here to the visible property and I will do the not statement as perms. Okay, so now the not statement says show this so it's the opposite so instead of instead of it showing when it's true it will only show if it's false okay so we've reversed that logic now on top of that icon I might also put a tooltip that says get access or some other really smart thing to say so that when they hover over it, it'll say get access. And then I would also add an on select to it that launches um, the URL for SharePoint get permissions. Um, and I don't have it handy right now, but I could also launch an email message. So I can launch a mail to with my email address and now um, when they click that icon it will actually send me an email okay and I could also put the whole string here like you know to, to say how I want to mail that it could even be a Outlook connector mail to it could be any number of things that I could launch from there or connect to so that when they click that don't have access get help icon it will do the right thing now another thing I can do instead of all of that I'm gonna get rid of that label and FYI you know I just press delete but in real life I tell you that I usually keep those labels and I hide them because I might use them over and over and over again so I don't actually delete them when I'm done I'll go ahead and hide them those are my debugging labels so to speak all right, so what I can do in addition is I can also send a notification. So at the top of the screen. So let me show you how I would do that. So we're going to go back to our visible, um, our on visible statement here. And uh, we can actually add here an if then statement for notification. So I'm just going to shift enter here. And I'm going to type if has perms equals false then I want to notify and Brian was really nice doing a whole vi video on this um, just recently right um, I want to notify them in one way otherwise maybe I don't want to do anything else right so it's fine if I just stop there so what I'm gonna do on this notify is I'm gonna put a message at the top of the screen so um, please click the what are those called tools icon to get access 
Now, this will prevent them from attempting to submit, right? Um, and I'm actually going to... I'm going to actually lie here. I'm going to say if it's true so that you can see what this message looks like, right? Because we know my access is true. Um, but I'm going to say true for now. And then we're going to go back to our first screen. And we're going to save. So I usually use control S when I'm working and I'm in a hurry. So I'm just going to control S to save. And then I'll run the app and you'll see what happens, right? So now I'm going to run the app. What you'll see when I hit the plus sign now is that I see the checkbox, right? But I set the notify to, if it's true, show me the notification. And so you can see that, see where it says, please click the tools icon to get access. That will actually not show up for me naturally because we would set that to false, but that's what it would look like, right? And you can change how this looks, which is why I really needed to show you what it looks like, right? You can actually, um, and, and Brian went into this in very, very good detail the last time. It defaults to info, right? So you don't have to put a second parameter on that, on that uh, notification function. It defaults to info. But if you want to, it can be both info or it can be, um, let's just look at all of these options here. So I'm going to go to here and I'm going to drop this down. And I'm going to hit a comma after this. It defaults to info, but I can have it show up as an error or as a success, right? Or as a warning, right? So I'm going to have it show up as a warning so you can see the difference in how it appears. I'm going to leave it, you know, if they have perm perm permissions, it's true. You'll see this notification just so that you can see it run because I do have access to that list. And now I'm going to hit the plus sign. You'll notice that it has the warning message here, right? And so it's yellow. So try them out. Brian also did a great video on Notify. And um, basically, that the, the, um, the tools icon will only show up if my has perms is false. So I'm just going to change this on visible statement so that it's accurate. It should actually only show me notified messages if they don't have access, just as it only shows me the tool icon if they don't have access, right? And here's the function that checks to see if they have access. So that's how simple that is. I tell you, it's just a matter of knowing, isn't it, right? So I'll keep putting out these videos. You keep trying it out. Let us know what you're thinking, and I'll look forward to seeing you at the next Friday Functions video.